Okay, it's time. I got my tripod back finally. So let's do some minimalist uh, solo fantasy role playing. I've elected to use the minimalist minimalist rules, meaning not only just three sources, but also the sources with the least content and most flexible uh, most flexible content. Uh, I don't know if it's the most flexible, but it's definitely the least diverse in terms of tables. But uh, We're going in with a full party. We've got six characters here. Uh, we are led by a human magic user by the name of... You can't really see him here. By the name of Melvin. Melvin... Uh, oh, I randomized their stats as well. So what we've got here is this is 3d6 in order. Uh, he knows three spells, also randomized. It uh, doesn't tell you how many spells a magic user can uh, learn at first level, at least not that I could see, so I randomized them except for read magic. So he's got read magic, detect magic, and light. He's got plus two save versus spells, uh, a dagger, and a sling. Um, yeah, he's going to be darn near useless until he gets better spells. Uh, next up, we have... Uh, Frederick, he is our human cleric. Clerics can't cast spells at first level. <laughs> um, and he's got, uh, he's got a mace. Uh, he can turn undead. Um, so yeah, we've got, we've got a lot of characters like this. I'll just go ahead and introduce them in mass. So we have Melvin, the magic user. We have, uh, Frederick, the cleric. We have... Sylvia, the elf, she's actually a variant elf, so she plays like a fighter magic user, and she knows pretty much the same spells as Melvin. Uh, then we have, let's see if I can remember their names. Uh, then we have Audrey, Varg, and Brutus, and those three are all fighters. Uh, as far as the stats go, Audrey has the best stats, but Brutus has the highest HP. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to cut and we're going to come back and we're going to randomize the kind of scenario they're in. Okay, we have Table Fables 2 and we're going to roll D100s for our quest. So let's do that. That's 55. So let's find 55 and take a look at what that is. Okay, it says... A mysterious warrior with a strange helmet has taken the royal tournament by storm. He moves steadily through the fights and eventually defeats the prince in combat. The angry prince hires you to take the knight out back to teach him a lesson. Interesting. Okay. It says he's got a strange helmet. Uh, all right. So I guess we will set that up really quick. <laughs> And um, let's see, where would the where would the prince be actually? So let's take out OSR solo and let's ask the oracles a couple of questions. Here we go. Um, so if we're gonna take him out back, we need to know where he is. So did we see where he went? Four. Yes, but but it's not some place we can get easily. Um, so I'm guessing like, is this kind of like, is this kind of like a club or something? I know we're not supposed to ask this too many questions. We're supposed to kind of decide for ourselves a lot of this stuff, but, uh, I'm going to say this is some kind of like prep area and we're going to have to send somebody in who might be able to blend in. Uh, that's going to be one of our three fighters who we're going to decide between. So one, I'll just go in order from left to right. So uh, one would be Brutus, two would be uh, Varg, and three is Audrey. So let's take a look there. Audrey has been selected to kind of uh, infiltrate the little uh, the little prep room and see if he uh, see if she can find this uh, this knight. And I just remembered we have a building generator in our generative source. But that is okay. Uh, maybe the prep room was built out of something else. So we have like building types here. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got a D6 to decide the building type. That's six. This is a religious building. 
Uh, and then oop, we need a D4. Okay. This is a one. It's a temple. Uh, is this temple still like in use or is this converted into something else? Yes. Not only is it in use, but uh, the priest is kind of hosting uh, a lot of these knights. So this is not just a, this is just like a tournament. This is some kind of religious event. So that's kind of nutty. Um, we don't need to really know what it was built out of, but let's take a look at how big the temple is. So this is three. This is small, 200 to 500 square feet. Um, and the number of stories, 11. It's got two stories, so it has a, it has a main floor and an upstairs. Well, I guess we can see if it has a basement. A one, it has no basement. And we don't really care about the age right now. So let's draw up what this temple might look like. Okay, so we've drawn up a temple here. Uh, I didn't really consult any kind of tables for this because, I mean, the, the generation tables in this book are mainly for, like, dungeons and stuff like that. So I decided uh, for a building or, like, a temple, I would just kind of... Uh, just draw it up myself. So we have like a, a, like an altar here. They've cleared away the pews to allow people to be in here to sort of refresh themselves. The white tokens are priests. The black tokens are either other contestants or just civilians that uh, are um, are working with uh, the, working with the priests or working with the other um, uh, with the other knights and stuff. So this is our guy. Uh, he is this strangely familiar looking fella. And our goal is to get Audrey to be able to bring him outside so that we can beat him up and hopefully collect some kind of reward. So that's a, that's a, that's our first adventure today. So let's consult the oracles again, because I have a question to ask. Uh, and I think it's going to be kind of likely. So the question we're going to ask is, is the like are the doors being watched like can anybody walk in or like do we need some kind of credentials and i think it's likely that we do uh so yeah here we go so how likely works is we either get a plus one or a minus one based or nothing at all based on likelihood but here we're acting with a plus one so do we need some kind of special permission to get in Five. That's a yes. Uh, so, would they? Would they accept? Um, you know what? She's gonna try and roll her charisma for this. She has a decent charisma score of twelve, so she's gonna try and talk her way in. Actually, so instead of consulting the oracle again, we are gonna go ahead and roll uh, a a skill roll for her. That's not really a thing in White Box, but we're gonna give it a shot. So she's going to try and roll under her charisma score of 12. And if she succeeds at doing that, then she has managed to kind of bullcrap her way in through the door. So here we go. A five. Great. Okay. So that means uh, Audrey has managed to say, oh, yeah, I belong here. I mean, look, she's got she's got a cool helmet, too. I mean, so she probably could easily pass for, like, uh, uh, maybe she came late. You know, she's supposed to compete, but maybe she came late. Meanwhile, I think what we're going to do is our guys here, we're kind of out back and we're, uh, we're waiting to do our job. We're strapped for cash. We're not necessarily, we're not necessarily the most moral bunch. Like we're not, we're not like horrible for immoral, but, uh, you know, so her next challenge here is, uh, oh, is, I put him here, uh, so I kind of assumed he would be engaged uh, talking to somebody. So is he talking to this person? Yes, and he doesn't even see us approach, which normally would be great. But, um, <laughs> you know, we kind of want to catch his attention so we can talk to him. Um, so interestingly, like, I actually didn't see this before. I don't know how I didn't, but... 
there are like plots and stuff like that. So anyway, we're going to see if we can grab his attention. This is going to be another charisma check on the part of Audrey, I feel like, because she's going to say, excuse me, sir, which we don't have a name generator. So we're going to call him, we're going to call him Osric. So Osric is going to uh, hopefully uh, pay attention to Audrey. She's trying to talk to him. So she's going to roll her charisma. Okay, so she's managed to do it the polite way <laughs> instead of us walking up and just slapping him. Um, so she's going to walk up and she's going to say, "What an interesting, what an interesting helmet you've got." Actually, we, uh, I have, I bring word from a couple of uh, fans out back who would like to, uh, they would like to speak with you. So could you come with us? Could you come with me and meet them because they really, really want to talk to you? Does this work? Does he? Does he come with us? Okay, yeah. So let's set up this uh, this combat because our job is to beat him up and teach him a lesson. So a bit of a predicament that I've run into is I don't know what kind of stat block we would use for him because obviously we're going to be fighting Osric. Um, so what I think we're going to do is we're going to use, once again, we're going to use the Oracle table, and we're going to ask it, is he stronger than us? Uh, and I'm going to leave it neutral, because we don't know what kind of tournament this is. We assume there's combat involved, but we have three combatants. So let's give it a shot. Is he stronger than us? Four. Yeah, but, I think the but is just that he's outnumbered. And he's not ready. So do you figure this would give us a free round of initiative on him? Yeah, but. I think that's just a yes. I'm not sure where the but would be. Okay, then. Well, uh, we're working with group initiative again because we are in white box. So let's, for him, let's go ahead and use like a soldier stat block if that's a thing. I can't quite remember. Uh, but he is, I'm going to say he's got like two hit dice. Yeah. Uh, I think what we're going to do, I think we're actually just going to use the, uh, the dwarf stat block for him. So he's got uh, one hit die plus one. He's got five hit points. Cool. So there's his five hit points. And we're gonna let's let's get him. Hopefully, oh um, no, wait, we're just jumping him. I was gonna say, does he like does he like try to ask us to stop or anything? But no, we're we're just jumping him. So he comes walking around the corner with Audrey, and he's like, oh, I, I hear you're you're fans of mine, and we're like, oh yeah, real big fans. Oh, so is the prince too. And he's like, oh, uh oh. So once again, the red is us. The blue is the other side. And, well, I don't know why I rolled initiative. We do get a free round, so I guess I'll use that for our other initiative. We got a six. That's great. Well, half of our party are good combatants. The other half, not so much. Well, Sylvia can fight. She's a fighter magic user. So that will be, that'll be the thing. So we'll have them, we'll have these guys move and attack. Well, actually, I guess we get, we only get one action. While uh, in white box huts, so they're going to move, and she is also going to move here. Then we go into initiative round or uh, into our first initiative. So that means we've got four attacks from these guys. So that means Audrey, Brutus, Varg, and Sylvia are all going to attack. I didn't give Sylvia a weapon. Whatever, you've got a long sword. It's almost all of its d6 anyway. Looks like Lorg sword. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, that's four attacks on this guy. This isn't really the kind of scenario I would have picked. Uh, you know, just ganging up on some random guy. But, you know, whatever pays the bills. Right? So here we go. Uh, Audrey gets a plus one to hit because she has 15 strength. So this uh, the red one is Audrey. Oh, wow. That's... Holy cow. Do you see that? 
that that's two that's two natural twenties, a fifteen and an eleven. And Osric's armor class is fifteen. So Audrey with the plus one is the only one who missed. Uh hmm. <laughs> There's just no justice in the world, is there? So the other three actually end up hitting. So longsword, longsword, axe. So that's three d six damage on poor Osric. Did we? We're not trying to kill him. We're just trying to beat him up. But uh, let's see. Oh yeah. No, Varg just took him down like in one hit. Crap. Well, we have to consult the oracles again. <laughs> I thought this would be a little harder than that. Let's consult the oracles again. Did we accidentally kill Osric? No. Okay, no. Not only is he not dead, but he's conscious, even though we managed to totally bushwhack him. We're not in combat anymore. Obviously, just because, like, wow. Well, that was short. Um... So I guess we leave him uh, broken and bruised on the ground, <laughs> like a bunch of thugs. And we're like, <laughs> the prince says his regards, scumbag. <laughs> That's, this is awful. We just brought some guy out back and beat the tar out of him. It wasn't even that hard. I mean, Audrey got right in. Um, okay, what, a, what an interesting adventure. Um, I hope there are some repercussions for that later but i really i just wanted to try in this video i just wanted to try the minimalist rules and see what they look like they're they're pretty free form as opposed to what we've been doing with labyrinth lord uh using a bunch of different books and generating a lot of stuff um uh, it leaves a whole lot more up to you so far um and like the next time I do this, I don't want to lean so heavily on um, on the poor oracles because we seem to ask them everything. Uh, when I watch other solo role players like uh, Arctic Choke Dip, they they seem to make a lot of decisions themselves as opposed to always referring to uh, a kind of a yes no limiter. So, I mean, I know we've done that in the past, like with Fortress City, we've. Uh, We've kind of gone, well, I decide this is going to happen because rule of cool. And fair enough. I, I like doing that. But um, part of my purpose in doing this isn't really to demonstrate how to do it. It's more just, can I do it? You know what I'm saying? So, well, that was a bit of fun, I guess. Poor Osric. Uh, next time we'll generate a new quest. Um, we should probably see how much we get paid for that. Um, I'm not sure... Oh, yeah. You know what? Let's just make it up on the fly. I said I wanted to do that, so what we're going to do is we're going to roll D100, and that's how much gold we get. Gold in Swords and Wizardry, by the way, is pretty much equal to experience. So here we go. We get 53 gold between the six of us. Now, do we, do we split it up and split the experience, or do we all just get 53 experience? I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. Thanks for watching. This is probably a shorter one, but uh, I mean, it was fun to do. Uh, yeah. Minimalist solo fantasy role playing. We're sure to see more of this. Next week, I kind of want to get back to the Fortress City because we have a lot to do there. Veronique is coming back from the dead as a ghost. Uh, I still got to paint up that miniature, but um, I do have some other stuff planned for the future as well. Uh, some war game stuff. I know I've talked about that, but. Um, uh, hopefully we can uh, get the practice in with the system because I'm going to be doing a match against my wife and it's a themed match. So that should be fun. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.